Koketso Mohotrani, aka K1K, the one is silent. Today we have a special guest by the name of Joel Moa. He works in anti deportation and an activist here in Ireland. Uh, we are here to talk about a man called Moses Ayangwale and the situation of Toyosi. Joe, welcome to Africa World TV. Just please tell us briefly about yourself. And how does the Moses uh, Ayanwale situation concern you? Yeah, I'm good evening and thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a member of Anti Deportation Ireland, which is a campaign consisting yeah. of asylum seekers and their supporters in Ireland, and we're campaigning for an end to deportation right. and to the direct provision system. So, as such, we would be opposed to all forms of racism, including state racism. And that's where the issue of the death of Moses Ayanwale and the subsequent court case is of interest to me and to ADI. Uh, just please, uh, for the audience's sake, just tell us what happened to Moses um, Ayanwale. Moses was a taxi driver and he was assaulted by one of his passengers, which resulted in him falling and that fall resulting in his death. Uh, the man responsible for assaulting him was charged with manslaughter. The court case took place this week and he was found not guilty of the death of Moses. And what concerns me and ADI is that this is the second time in the past two years where um, an African person was brutally murdered on the streets of Dublin and the person responsible in both cases was found not guilty and I would have serious questions to ask of the judicial system in Ireland that allows such events to occur. Now Joe, how exactly did this uh, punch result, uh, where did it really start that uh, a te the, tex the Irish tra taxi driver and the African taxi driver started quarrelling. Uh, how did that start? No, it wasn't two taxi drivers. The Irish person responsible okay. for assaulting Moses was actually a passenger. Right. And there was a dispute about how many passen passengers that the taxi could bring, which resulted in words being spoken between Moses and those passengers which resulted in one of the passengers assaulting him, hitting him, he fell, and as a result of that fall, he subsequently lost, lost his life. Well, uh, tell us a bit about Toyosi's situation. Toyosi is a teenager living in um, northwest Dublin in Terrellstown. Uh, he was out with his friends playing. It was um, spring evening, it was fine. Yeah, yeah. And there was some confrontation between Toyosi and his friends and two um, local people. Those two who, who were grown men went away, came back with weapons and which resulted in Tyosi receiving stab wounds and dying on the spot. Uh, the two of them were charged with his murder yeah. on the day the court was due to begin. One of the brothers died in prison that resulted in the case being adjourned, and when it was reheard, the judge instructed the jury to find the accused person not guilty. So our concern is there are two African men, one a teenager, the other a married man with children, brutally killed on the streets of Dublin, and in both instances, those charged with their deaths were found not guilty in the courts. Uh, Joe, just tell us you know, just how you feel about this whole situation. Do you think it is a racism act? Or, you know, just please tell us what do you think this is, you know? Because, oh. yeah. Okay, I, I would argue that yes, it is racism. And there was a high profile case in Florida in the United States last year where a young African-American, Trayvon Martin, was gone down to death. The person that did it was brought to court and found
found not guilty, and that created uproar, I suppose, in the United States, even to the extent of uh, Barack Obama making comments on it. Now, when similar events happen in Ireland, uh, nobody is speaking out about it. It is totally silent. And if you were to look at it dispassionately, you have two black men losing their lives. The accused persons in both cases are white. They're tried in a white court before a white jury and a white judge, and they're found not guilty. Now, if that happened in the United States, there would be no argument to be clearly seen as racism. But when it happens in Ireland, unfortunately, nobody's saying anything. Even the coverage in the mainstream media of both court cases has been very minimal. And I'm concerned that a message is going out that it's okay to assault or even to kill African people in Ireland. Now, sorry to stop you there. Now, would you say that, uh, you know, this is the only incident, the racial incident that has happened that has... uh, occurred to to your organization or and you know uh, why aren't the people speaking about this about especially about Moses because we haven't heard much about uh, Moses Adianwali situation I think that's deliberate because to my mind it that court case should have got a lot more publicity as far as I'm aware RTE yeah. the national broadcaster did not report on it the Irish Times gave it very minimal coverage and there was a little bit more in the Irish Independent. And unfortunately, people are not aware of it. Um, we were obviously aware of it from the time that Moses was killed and just kept following the story to see what would happen. And it seems to be just brushed under the carpet. It's as if Moses never existed. From the report in the newspaper, it would appear that the judge had more sympathy for the accused person than he did have for Moses' wife and children. So I believe it's incumbent on those of us who believe this is wrong and believe it is racism that we must speak out. You know, I I think I would argue argue with the fact that I'm I'm, I'm neither on both sides. And, you know, a lot of people will say that Irish people have never really faced uh, racism in Ireland or where because you know, you you guys were the uh, depressed by the British, so there's no black and white situation here. So this is this is something new that you're facing now uh, with the racist um, uh, issues. Yeah, on one level I would agree with you, but on another level I wouldn't because we've had, I suppose, immigration into Ireland for about twenty years. Yeah, but. There is an ethnic minority living in Ireland, you know, travellers. And the travelling community in Ireland has been the victim of both state racism and individual racism since before the foundation of this state. And that continues up to this day. If you look at the statistics with regard to travellers, they have a higher infant mortality rate, um, lower life expectancy, their men are more likely to end up in prison than in third level education. And those statistics mirror the statistics for African Americans in the US, etc. And another group of people that are more recently at the receiving end of state racism is yeah. the Roman community, where we had a situation last October yeah. where two children taken by the Gardaí and the HSE because they were blonde with blue eyes and didn't match the stereotype that the authorities in this country have for Roma. So that's the reason I, I would say that racism is not new in Ireland, yeah. but racism changes how it manifests itself. And obviously now with a lot more African people in Ireland, or people with darker skin, it's manifesting itself against those. And we would argue in ADI that the way asylum seekers are treated is another form of state racism. And would you reckon that this uh, attacks will continue? Uh, like you said, uh, that you feel that this is deliberate and, you know, it is murder. I would, we would uh, point it as murder at this point because it's deliberate, like you said. Do you think that this sort of behaviour will continue? I think it has the potential to continue, but there's an onus on all of us who see this as wrong to stand up against it 
and that's why the protest that's taking place tomorrow in O'Connor Street in Dublin is important because it sends out a strong signal to both the Irish public and to the Irish authorities that people are aware of the injustice that's taking place in the courts and that we're not prepared to sit back. It is only when that happens and the authorities are challenged and the general public is challenged that people will think twice before carrying out such assaults again. Now, before attacking, you know, before talking about what should be done, uh, just, you know, have you guys tried to figure out why um, Irish people, a certain group of Irish people are reacting in this way? Why do they feel like, they probably feel threatened? I don't know, like, you know, uh, why do they, why is this happening? Could it be that they feel that uh, African people are coming to the country in bulks and perhaps taking their jobs or anything like that. Have you guys discovered why is this happening? I suppose that the, the reason it's happening, it, it boils down to racism and you have to say to yourself, why does racism exist? What causes racism? And what we would argue is that racism can be used by governments and by ruling elites to keep people at the bottom divided. We are going through one of the worst recessions since the 1930s at the moment and it suits the government's purpose if you have the people that are suffering most fighting amongst themselves rather than uniting and you know, uh, putting their anger against where, where the problem is. So you're saying that you think that this is projected by the people highest up in parliament in Ireland. And let me give to an example. Yeah, let me give the example of the asylum seekers, I think, which is the, the most obvious example. Right. You've just under 6,000 men, women, and children at the moment seeking asylum in Ireland. They're kept in a system called direct provision where they're not allowed work. They're given 19 euros, 10 cents a week to live on. Their meals are prepared with them, their movements are restricted, and all of them face the potential to be deported. And the reality of deportation is people being taken from their beds at 4, 5 a.m. in the morning, sometimes families being torn apart and, and sent back to, to the countries of their origin. And if they show any resistance or reluctance to go, they are dealt with, assaulted, and, and, and you know, handcuffed, etc., and when you have that as a state policy, which ABI argues is in fact racism, then ordinary people on the ground, if they see the government behaving in this way, they then decide, you know, that, that maybe it's okay to physically assault somebody who doesn't look Irish. Well, Joe, this is a very big issue. I hope that we can, you know, elaborate more on the subjects and really get people involved to know about what's really going on in Ireland you know uh, I think people a lot of people are avoiding the subject because they think it's awkward it may be awkward but it is happening you know and just please tell us what do you want people to do what do you want the Irish community to do about this what do you want the African community to do about this uh, the Asian community as well uh, what do you want us to where to from here? Where to from here? Yeah. Where to from here? I, I think there has to be unity between the various communities that, that you listed there, African communities, Asian communities, the yeah. Roma, as well as with the Irish people who do not support what's happening. And when you have that unity at grassroots level, then that will that can affect change because we cannot allow what's what's going on to continue. We don't want a situation in 30 or 40 years' time when apologies are being given to former asylum seekers yeah. in the Dáil or whatever, and for us to say, yeah, we knew it was happening, but we did nothing. I think we're obliged to challenge this wrong, just the same as it was challenged right around the world, in apartheid South Africa, yeah. in the United States, etc. And going back even to the fight against the Atlantic slave trade, it's a continuum, and I think there's an onus on people who see it as being wrong and being racist to unite and to challenge it. Thanks, Joe, for coming Thank in you. to see us. Uh, 
guys we can only tackle one topic at a time uh this is a very deep issue we need to know what you think please like or unlike us on facebook at africa world uh, newspaper uh, on our website africa world newspaper dot com uh, and also anti deportation island uh, my name is Koketo Mohotwanya aka Kimwenke the one is silent thank you <laughs>